One part man, one part mutt, Dog Pound is all evil. Mutated from martial arts master Chris Bradford, this razorback brawler's been reborn with bite and fight that'll rival any teen turtle he faces. Fiercely loyal to the Foot Clan, Dog Pound's off his leash and off his rocker, and ready to tear into anyone foolish enough to face him. Armed with canine claws and teeth and mutant spikes, and affiliated with the Foot Clan, Dog Pound is Shredder's top dog. Okay, and following that riveting introduction, this is a video review of Dog Pound from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2012 line from Playmates based on the currently airing Nickelodeon cartoon show. So, let's start with Dog Pound in his packaging. If you've seen the packaging for any of the un other Turtles figures, you kind of know what to expect here. It's Dog Pound, he's Shredder's top dog on the back. There's uh, a picture of him and his bio, which I read in the introduction. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it as far as uh, personalization goes for the character. Uh, one thing that's different about the Wave 2 figures is it does have the callouts uh, for other figures in the line, and it's got the split down the center like the old vintage packaging. So you have the turtles on one side, the turtles and good guys on one side, and the foot affiliated characters and other villains like the Krang, who we don't know who they're affiliated with yet. But there's that, and that's really cool. And I look forward to seeing future figures in the line because hopefully that'll just keep expanding and eventually we'll have these little tiny turtles on one side and a whole bunch of villains on the other side, and it'll be awesome. Other than that, the packaging is largely unremarkable. I mean, it, it looks good on the shelf, but uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about it beyond what I already have. So, I will move on. Here's Dog Pound out of the package. Like all of the figures from the line so far, he's not meant to exactly replicate what you see on screen. It's more of an approximation. But I like that, because so far the toys have actually more detail than the the characters on the show. For example, with Dog Pound here, he's he's a giant mutated dog. But on the show, instead of all this beautifully sculpted fur, you just get a smooth surface. And it's fine for a CG show, but but as a toy that you can look at, you know, a three-dimensional object, well, it's sort of meant to look three-dimensional on the show too, but but the toy looks better with the sculpted lines, I think, versus not having them. He's also got these uh, belts that he doesn't have on the show, sort of up under his chin and around his back and such. And they look cool. They'd look cooler if they were painted, but they're not. So whatever. They're just kind of there. But yeah, in general, uh, pretty good looking. I love the asymmetry and how he's got this, this one regular looking arm uh, and this other arm with all these awesome wicked spikes on there mutant spikes I don't know what the deal is with him I guess his mutagen got spiked ha ha but yeah he's a good looking figure uh, some parts of his sculpt are a little soft like uh, the, the claws on the right hand are kinda weird looking and the legs especially just look really soft uh, with the tatters around the shins and the bands there. And the knee pads especially. I guess they're supposed to be spikes, but but they look like little panels with goosebumps. Oh, and uh, with respect to his muzzle, like on the show, when uh, Dog Pound turns to the side, you can see he actually has a full dog face that actually has an elongated muzzle so he's not like a cat but uh, the toy for whatever reason lacks that and you know it's it's not a big deal when you're looking at him from the front he really does look enough like the show model from the side looks kinda bad but in general uh, he's he's pretty great looking he is however as I mentioned uh, sorely lacking in the paint department 
And that's that's really uh, more a problem with the the very detailed sculpt than anything else. Because as far well, and the character. Because as far as paint goes, compared to other figures in the line, it's not like he's significantly uh, lacking compared to them. In fact, arguably, he's got more complex paint operations with uh, the airbrushing of the orange on his fur, like how they've left uh, the undersides of the arms and the belly and parts of the face unpainted. That looks very cool. And uh, I can't really think of anything on the other figures that, that is comparable in terms of technique. But he does have all these sculpted details that, that go without paint. And the worst looking part on the figure is this chunk on his back that's completely unpainted. And it wouldn't look as bad if it were just the spikes. But see, this whole piece, in order to fit him in the package, I guess, comes detached. And you have to put it on yourself. But there's parts of the fur, there are the, the backs of the belts on it. But the whole chunk is just white. So you get this weird transition when you turn him around. It's just like a cutout where um, where he's been hit by Murky and Lurky or something. And it, it looks horrible. Uh, not as much of a problem with the tail, which is again the same deal. It comes detached. You stick it on because it doesn't have that orange like right next to it. But, yeah. Articulation! Dog Pound is rocking 13 points of articulation with a swivel neck, a swivel waist, a swivel tail, swivel wrists, and swivel hinged shoulders and hips. So, not a lot of points of articulation like uh, most of the figures in the line that aren't the turtles. But he still has excellent poseability. And a lot of that is due to this oversized right arm here right arm left arm the oversized left arm here and also his swivel tail which is really well the arm is uh, more useful for it but the swivel tail also helps uh, and not because it swivels but that that is useful but yeah that can be used for balancing and the arm can be used for balancing so like if you want to have him in some sort of walking lumbering position you can do that if you want to have him in a more dynamic lunge where he's got his actual right hand as opposed to his oversized left hand back here swiping uh, while he balances with the left you can totally do that um, yeah it's pretty cool also if you look at how his right leg is bowed out uh, as opposed to the left leg, which looks pretty normal. Um, that That's also very useful for posing. Like, it doesn't look that great if you're just looking at him head on and you have him in a vanilla pose. But whereas the left leg uh, is pretty limited in how far it can rise, it sort of uh, gets caught at the belt and can't go any further, or uh, any higher. The right leg can go way up there because it's actually designed so that it clears the belt. I really like that. I kind of wish they'd done that with the left leg too, but yeah. So he's awesome. I really enjoy posing him. In fact, I like posing him more than some of the Turtles figures, which is counterintuitive since they are uh, much better articulated. But there you have it. I think Dog Pound, uh, between his involved and asymmetrical body type, and the way he can use various appendages to balance. I just think that he can pull off much more dynamic and uh, interesting poses. So, yeah, he's pretty cool. Okay, so I've kind of avoided the uh, biggest problem with the figure, and we'll come to that now. And that is his size. On the show, Dog Pound is enormous. He towers above all of the turtles. If he were standing, he would tower above the shredder. There's one point uh, where they're driving a truck, and he's too big to fit inside the truck, so he just kind of hops on and rides it hanging off the side like he's a garbage worker, except he's almost as big as the truck, or at least the cab portion of it. Yeah, he's, he's a big guy. Whereas the toy is not even taller than some of the turtles figures like you can see here Donatello is looking down at him 
versus on the show where he would be just looking down on everybody because he's a monster. And the toy, not so much. But, hey, I understand, uh, you know, Playmates couldn't make a gigantic thing like that and still fit it in the package. Could have come out as a deluxe figure, I guess, but... I can definitely see why a lot of people would give Dog Pound the stink eye, Dog Pound the figure of his stink eye because of his small stature. But I think he's still a really fun figure. Like I said, the, the posability, if not the articulation, is great. He does look good despite uh, the lack of paint detail. And also, he's, he's really fun and interacts well with the other toys. Like he may not be as big as he should be, but for example, his right hand, and we're really talking about his right hand, I didn't get them mixed up that time, haha, -ha, almost seems like it's made to wrap around April's waist. So even though April's taller than he is, he can still lift her up very easily. He's also, since you know, or since you can see how he's holding her up and not tipping at all. He's a very heavy figure and this despite the fact that his legs are almost completely hollow. Like he's got some heft to him and I, I really like that. So, final verdict. Should you get Dog Pound? If you're a collector and you're really into show accuracy and you care about detailed paint jobs and things like that you're not gonna like him as much as say a kid I think kids will like him e despite his small size despite lots of things because he's a really fun toy I like him because he's a really fun toy and he's an important character on the show so if you can't get past this size then yeah definitely don't buy him you're you're not gonna enjoy him but if you're anyone else and you like fun toys, I say you should pick him up because he's fun, uh, poseable, looks great with the other figures despite not towering above them, is a great value at uh, most places have him for eight ninety nine, and you can probably get him for less if you wait for sales. And while the paint detail is kind of lacking, if you have any customizing ability at all, you could at least rectify some of that. Like you could fix the belts, give him a wash, and might be kind of hard matching the orange paint, but I'm sure someone out there has got some recommendations about which hue of pumpkin spice you should use to fix him up. Anyway, that's my video review of Dog Pound. Uh, if, yeah, if you feel like commenting, please let me know what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, because I uh, would like to improve. So, yeah, thanks a bunch. I'm Wes of Scary Crayon and happy new year see you soon bye bye